Whether I am working a young horse or riding a seasoned horse, I am always going through my checklist to guide me in what I need to do with my horses. Generally speaking, I stick to my instinct roadmap, and I willingly step back if it is in the best interest of me and my horse. I want every session to be enjoyable and safe for both me and my horses. These are the checklists that I use. Here's my basic care checklist. Are they in good weight? Are their feet in good condition? Is their coat shiny? Do they have ample turnout with good forage? If the answer is no to any of these questions, I revisit in care. Here's my checklist before mounting. Is my horse focused on me or are they distracted? If they're distracted, I go back to my in-focus exercises. Is my horse respecting me? If not, I go back to my in-control exercises. Do I have basic control on the ground? If not, I go back to my in-control exercises. Is my horse fresh? If yes, I go back to in-focus and in-control exercises. Is my horse snarky? For example, he does not want to go forward and may explode if I push the issue. If so, I go back to in control and in focus exercises before mounting. I may do this several times. I am little and I always choose not to battle with my horse while I'm on their back. Is my horse in a playful mood? If so, I go back to my in focus and in control exercises where they can play without putting me at risk. Are they accepting of their environment and not spooking at anything? If not, I go back to in focus and I follow this with in touch sensory training. Here's my rider checklist. I use this before riding. Am I balanced in my tack? Can I readily go from a sitting position to a two point position without my leg moving? Is my athletic stance in the tack solid? If not, I revisit in balance exercises. Here's my checklist once I'm mounted. Once mounted, I revisit the checklist I went through before mounting. Sometimes, once you're mounted, you can feel tension in your horse that was not visually obvious. Here's my advanced work checklist. Are they supple, fit, balanced, responsive laterally, and responsive longitudinally? If not, I continue with my in-tune exercises before asking for more advanced work. Once I feel ready to start into more advanced work, the in-tune exercises remain part of my training rides to assure that they stay supple, fit, balanced, etc. When I am training, I am constantly evaluating where my horse is in his training and what skills might still need to be taught or may need to be revisited. I try to prevent my horses from ever developing bad habits by always trying to make sure that I have given them the tools to do the task being asked and that I have spent the time to develop the communication between myself and my horse. I frequently take two steps back to take three steps forward. I call this the dance of Taji. This is the key to providing my horses with a solid foundation. Think about if you asked a six-year-old child to write a story. They could muddle through it. However, it is a very easy task if they first learn the alphabet, then learn how to write words, then how to put the words into sentences, and then how to lay out a story. The same would be true of a foreign language. You could use the translation dictionary to learn a few words, but you haven't really laid out the foundation for knowing the language. We muddle through many tasks and efforts to save time. Muddling through often gets the job done in the moment, but because there isn't a solid foundation, it usually just results in us becoming frustrating, creating problems, and wasting a lot of time. I commit to the process, however long it takes to give my horses the tools and foundation they need to do their job. Training can be uneventful and straightforward. I rarely battle with my horses. On the days that I do, I usually wish I haven't. I am always seeking the balance and harmony with my horses, and it lets me achieve my next goal.